welcome back. It's too cold out today to be dressed in a t-shirt like I was when I'd done the planting that I'm going to show you in this video. So switching from a winter coat to a t-shirt it is. In this video I planted one of the male sea berries and the Hosage orange up on the top hill along with a Meyer Bland cherry plum. So I hope you enjoy. Sit back and relax. Don't know about working hard, but there's a million things to be done. So we got this female sea berry here. You see that's a uh, Meyer Bland cherry plum. And that little one over here is a Meyer Bland cherry plum. This time of year it seems like the sun's always in the wrong spot. This is the smallest of four cherry plum trees that I have here. Realizing that I can only really handle about half an acre right here. And then beyond it's, I'll be still maintaining it, but it'll be more of a chop and drop uh, thing. I want to have a version of everything I'm trying to grow down in this half acre. So since I got four of these here, I'm going to try to dig up this one and put a male sea berry here. I don't think that was too badly damaged. some compost here and it's soaking wet because I left it in the bucket when we had that rain last week. The sea berries, now these are um, from cuttings. They look really mature even though they're tiny and it might be because they're from cuttings. Growing them from seed it will take about four years before they start to uh, produce, in this case produce pollen. Growing them from cuttings, well, I don't know, right? We shall see. If we get fruit next year, then that means that this little one that I'm going to plant beside it is putting out pollen already. I shall do it gently by loosening the soil around it. Take these weeds out of there, might as well, since I'm at it. I'll just reach in and see what we got for roots. Well, the soil's going to fall away from the roots anyway. So, this is the root system we have. I need to add some more compost to finish filling it up. The hole, that is. There, now, the question is, should I put cardboard around that? Or should I trust that I can actually keep the weeds away from immediately around it next year? I'll have to think about that. As I suspected they would, but I tried it anyway. Remember when I made these pots out of uh, pieces of siding? And I said the string that I was putting across the bottom, it was that uh, salsa twine. And it will probably rot and uh, not be any good. You need a nylon twine or some wire or something. So the line that's was holding the bottom in on all of these pots have decomposed over the summer. So I have two. Put my hand in under the bottom to move it.
these are the Osage Orange, the extras that I had when I planted the original ones. One of them appear, has appeared to have died. There's a little bit of green right there, I don't know what that is, but above I scratch right here and there's no life at this height. Well, the one right next to them was this one and grew perfect. Exceptionally well. Now, this was the original tree though, see that? And the winter kill killed it back. So we'll bring those now. We've got how many Hosey orange do we have? We have six Hosey orange here and then that one uh, cherry plum. We'll bring those up on the top flat and uh, plant them up there and see how well they take. Of course we don't have the uh, snowshoe hares around now so and I don't think there's any moose around. On top of that they're getting pretty big with uh, some lot, lot of thorns so I don't think they'll be bothered now. Uh, we'll see come spring how well they do. Hey, you see this? Twenty years ago, there was some oat seed planted here, and every year a few blades grow up. Don't produce any seed worth talking about, but uh, that grows. I was looking around to see where I had where we planted the original ones. Those with the sticks around them. I knew they were growing. What I found was the next two up. You see, there's one there. And where did I see the other one? Right here. This one's growing. So that's five along there. I didn't find any growing down here. There would have been another five. And along here, there's I think five. And if we go in right here, For something that I'd gotten heat right down to the ground, and this little bit uh, died of winter kill last winter, it grew ex exceptionally well. So, the question is now, where do I want to put those six? But I also thought about, wait a minute, I want to have one down below, don't I? I had to find out what size they are, so I'll bring one back down. So it's five I need to find out where to plant. We have some holes dug for those five, but I forgot to mention, and I've got to find them again, of course. This one here, well, it doesn't appear to have grown. There's some green down below here, and uh, it may yet revive. I don't know. But at any rate, we only have five. Got that skewed shadow always going in the way. You see the soil that's right here? That's that hole on this side of the uh, quad trail. Then we will walk across the quad trail. And you see it's a, a lighter soil and more of a sand. We'll go up to this one. And now it's even lighter with more rocks in it and gray stuff. Now we're going to go up the other side of the quad. Here we have gravel. Similar to uh, what's in the garden down below, 
but there's a lot more rock in this. And if I get down below, there's clay in it. Same thing, of course, with this one here. You see, it's all full of rock and that orange soil in among it. And there's a layer of clay right here. That is actually typical of the Boreal Force. Uh, Podzols, I think the name is. Okay, so we got our first uh, plant here. I think I'll. And if the uh, string had not decomposed, then I would have to either cut it or untie it. But since it is, I can just take this pot now. You see, like that. Drop it down. And then separate it. Put some of the soil down around the outside edge here. See about removing these few weeds. There we have it, and like I said, the foxes moved in and they seem to have decimated the uh, snowshoe air population. So I shouldn't have a problem. I have to ignore the garbage being around. Uh, someday I'll get the rest of it cleaned up. There was an awful pile of garbage on this property. I left the bottom, in mean this one, over in the trailer. Well, that trailer that's right there beside me, I guess I'm going to have to move that sooner or later, eh? Because otherwise these trees will be growing up and I'll have no way of getting them out. I have to cut it apart. A lot of weeds grew up in this one. They come back beautifully in the uh, spring. Now, we are going to have another warm winter with uh, very little snow. So, I don't know how much winter kill the tips are going to get. We we'll just have to wait and see. Easy peasy. Now I'll come back up and cut down these alders. I learned over the summer that alders are nitrogen fixers. And if you don't let them get this big, they'll make an excellent chopping drop. If you leave them to the... Cut them before they get too big that you can cut them with the edge trimmer. You can come with the edge trimmer and just go back and forth all the way down like that and then you end up with a bunch of little short pieces of wood down the ground perfect chop and drop for uh, beside a tree like this if you get if you don't let them grow up they can grow up and swamp a tree but uh, yeah cut them before they get this big and uh, you can use them for chop and drop now I have to cut them and I either have to bring them to the chipper 
or set them out for a dead edge. And I think a dead edge is what they're going to become. I guess one of the maintenance chores I'm going to have to do is come up here with the line trimmer once in a while and trim down all the grasses and stuff around. Of course, make sure I don't hit any trees. <coughs> These rings of sticks here, back in the spring, I was up here and I put these down. That's a uh, maturing apricot. There's a sign on this one over here. I'll show you what the... I'll hold it up so you can read it. I'm not the best at pronouncing words. So that's what they are. Got to get another set of seeds for them. And now I have to decide where I want to put that uh, cherry plum tree that I brought up here. You'll have to ignore the neighbor throwing wood if you hear anything banging in the background. I decided to plant it over on this side. So I walked up here and uh, you know, I was a big wide root mass for uh, this cherry plum. But I don't even have to dig a hole for that. Putting down on the ground and I brought the lumps from the other holes, surrounded them. And uh, there he is. He should grow just fine. Got another clump of alders I got to cut down. <laughs> I got to planting these things, eh? And uh, I thought about there's all wild plants growing up around tree seedlings and all. And I said, I don't have to worry about the snowshoe here. It's coming and cutting them down because the population has been decimated by the foxes but I might come up and uh, be cutting down tree seedlings that I thought uh, I don't want and end up cutting one of those too so I better put sticks around those so how does that saying go uh, necessity is the mother of invention and laziness is its father gardening is an experiment now Osage Orange can grow 30 to 40 feet tall. They've been known to grow to 60 feet tall, but 30 to 40 is more like it. They want full sun, so south is that way. Um, we're on the slope up from the well. It gets a fair amount of uh, moisture here. So it should grow well, and now there's no bottom in this. So what I decided to do, like you said, at laziness, is to uh, just set that there and see what happens. Its roots will grow right down into the ground from there. Um, the other reason I decided to set that there is because, see right here, that's a tree root. So the spruce tree root I was looking at here. So there's fair, several large roots that grows here. And so I'm going to put this here and just let the tree grow down among everything else. And see how it works. It'll have full sun for many years because anything I'm planting this side of the well then I'll, uh, it'll be lower anyway and it's up the slope so yeah it should grow just fine there so that's for those remember we still have got mulberry black locusts and honey locusts to go so I hope you enjoyed the video as always hit the like button for me if you want to follow along, make sure you're subscribed, and I'll see you in the next video.